by no means mechanic. Proudly brought to you by iCheck TPMS. Good day guys and welcome back to another episode with just vanning it. Now this episode is completely different. I'm turning myself into possibly a semi-decent mechanic. So we got to do some upgrades to the cruiser. Now you've already seen by now we've put the mode on but when we were doing all the modifications didn't quite go to plan with all our bookings. So some of these mods that you will see in this episode were done before the, the mode canopy went on a cruiser but we still thought we'll show show it to you we're trying to make our touring rig a little bit better and replacing some stuff that most probably needs to be replaced due to wear and tear we've tried to put the best stuff that we can possibly put on the cruiser change it up make it feel good again because we've got plenty of kilometers to do in the in the cruiser so enough of that dribble let's jump straight into it Right guys, so the first mod to our cruiser, or upgrade I should say, check this out, it really needs a bit of uh, love the old girl, but um, got a little bit of a break in the weather, so I thought I'd have a crack at this. Now this should be sort of a remove and replace simple. So check this out, you can see, here's the old exhaust, look, shame. She's had a fair go, rusting. I don't know what exhaust it is or what size it is. It come with the cruiser. I've got something. So that's got to go. Now, this is a DPF model, so I had to buy a DPF back exhaust. So check this out. So here we go. Bought it from GSL. So by that, you can tell what type of exhaust it is. So that is a four inch stainless steel exhaust. Something I've been wanting to upgrade for a while was the exhaust and Sue's been on me about it. And um, jumped online, I think I paid just over two grand for that exhaust and it shipped it down to me. So I do believe we would pull the old one off because it is for a dual cab uh, 79 Cruiser 2017 model. So we're going to get stuck into that. I thought I'd give it a go myself. Sue's working, it's Friday today. So if I can't, if I don't manage to do it by myself, Sue will be able to help me tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure it's a yeah plug and play sort of thing so let's get into it by no means mechanic but i'm pretty handy with these things but i've never really operated one of these things check this out look at this yeah, makes life a little easy working on the car that's why i'm giving it a crack myself but um anyway it's good to have mates with all the gear so let's jump under and let's have a look what we need here we go <sighs> oh so, shame she's taking a beating under here. She really needs a bit of love, this this chassis on this cruiser. But anyway, that may come later. But here we go. Let me just, I'm doing this all myself. I take it, it's going to be from here back. But I hope it's got the sensor on the exhaust. We've got to, so we're going to loosen it off there. There. Looks like we got. Up here, there's a piece, so that's one piece, and then through to there, so here's another sort of bracket, there's a bit going on here, but nevertheless, we're going to have a crack at it, so what I think I'm going to do, I'm just going to go and open that box, I'll lay it all out on the floor, just double check myself, then get the size tools, we'll spray some WD-40 on some bolts here, so they look all a bit rusted, so... I think that's the guy. Gaskets, well, look how well um, insulated the box is when you order the stuff, so it doesn't get damaged. Look at it, so good. Oh, wow, we've got a bit going on here. Let's have a look. So three pieces, this one comes in. Makes sense for the two gaskets. So, uh, let's have a look here. This is, this looks like the piece that'll go onto the BPF. And then it comes back out. So, I'm gonna have to, yeah, open this all up, I reckon. So here we go. I thought that was the piece. That'll go onto the BPF. There's the, there's the hole for the sensor. And uh, so that we'll unscrew the sensor. 
then obviously another piece on here so we'll lay this all out and see how it's all gonna go together i'm pretty i'm pretty excited man wow look how good it looks hey staying still baby well an hour or so later we got it out mate those some of those bolts got me impact gun to get it out and like i said i'm no mechanic no exhaust specialist but here we are here's the old one obviously got to get these off i to take it through and what i can't do is get that sensor out there so i've sprayed a bit of wd-40 on that see if it'll set and i'll now that i've got it out i can maybe get a bit more leverage on it i just don't know we we're not taking these rock tamers anymore they go on so i can take them off i've got to get that four inch exhaust through here now i don't know how i'm going to do that because i've got airbags i don't want to scratch the new one so yeah let's give it a crack eh? Popped out during a lunch break and this is my view. We've got Bobby helping Derek over there, as you can tell, huge help. And um, we've got old mate under the car, how are you going down there? Oh, it doesn't make sense, bro. It doesn't make sense? Uh, oh dear, well you got to work it out, my sweet. Oh, you know what? Yes, Derek. Yes. Guys like that, you ding dong. And what do you, what do you mount it to? There's a bracket here. Well, there you go, you see? Alright, hang on a minute. It's just like Lego for big boys. Oh! <laughs> this part that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it goes like that. Shiny is that, eh? Hey? It's looking very good. The only problem is it makes the rest look really old. I know. So now you have to replace everything. No, oh, I don't know so much about that. Anyway, okay, so that goes in like that. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you playing with your part. That was a struggle. Right, I got it in. In through. We've got to get the gasket back. I thought putting the bolts on and the gasket on it would just slide on, but it didn't. That's okay. And then we got the last little piece, which will go to the DPF. Got the sensor out of the other one. I'm just going to nip it up here. Yes, there it is. I think it has to be much tighter than that, but got the gasket stole from the other one there. And you know, realistically, that's it all that should go together. See why well, it's been a it's been a thing, but it's not about that is a little bit about saving money, but I like to challenge myself to, um, you know, new challenges. And I think I've done okay. I must forget to put the airbag bolt back in. You know, we'll get it all the way through, and I'm learning something new every day. No strategy. Who gives a shit about him anymore? Guess we never really settled the score. Half the town's I've done a thing. Anyone got a job for me? I must not forget to plug that sensor in, otherwise we'll have dramas there. But, I've just got to tighten up everything, so what do we got? Yeah, three, six, seven, eight bolts to tighten up. And then I've got to cut some plastic off there. And, um, I'll tell you what, mate, I am absolutely ex excited about this. Now, I did not buy this for the sound. That's why we haven't done a sound test. I bought this. For, because the other one was looking a bit shoddy and I wanted something that looked nice and um, you know you only hear a lot of GSL so I don't know if you can be able to see but look at that all the way there's a DPF over there we're going through we're going up and over we're all out the back I've got to tighten up that also that airbag so I managed to get it in look it wasn't for that airbag it was just slotting I've got to bend that properly up there, the airbag um, exhaust sort of cover, 
to prevent it. Um, I was going to do a better job than that, but guys, I don't even think I've done too bad, baby. GSL exhaust, four inch stainless steel all the way through. Now we've done some kilometers with it on. Now, like I said, we weren't going to put it on for noise or anything like that. It does sound a bit, bit, bit better, but we got the DPF, but for looks wise, it just finishes that back end off there. Something Self and Sue wanted to do for a while. So pretty happy the way that turned out. Now let's jump into the second sort of upgrade on the car. All right guys, this is um, our second upgrade to our cruiser for, 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 for the next couple of years of traveling. Now yesterday I did the um, exhaust pretty much all by myself, but we're on the next day and Sue's, Sue's here to help me. Yeah, huh? oh, I'm good. excited. I'm excited about this one. Beautiful day in Victoria. Actually, it is good because it's not too hot to work. So the second upgrade we're doing to the car is we bought this car with 70,000 Ks on it. And it had the shocks on already. Our, in the, since we've got bought it, we've done, uh, oh, my maths, 30, 70, that's 75,000 Ks we've done with the cruiser. And the shocks were on the cruiser when we bought them. Now, we've done Cape York with it, the Gib, some other dirt roads, and you know, just some real hard, it's always under load, the car. So we haven't had them checked out, but I just thought to see, you know what, we have the opportunity, let's just do them. And you know, when we leave Melbourne and we can start our, start our trip again, you know, it's just puts my mind at rest. So we have bought, done a little bit of research, and um, BB51 Amy's from um, ARB. Now, I have absolutely no idea what that means. Neither do I. <laughs> um, no, no, seriously, guys, we're, um, we have Old Man Emu in here, but it's just the gas shocks. You know, money is everything to us as well when we're traveling. So I went to CILB and um, they reckon that the coils and the springs that we have, all the old man emu as well. So we actually don't really need to change them if we don't need to change them. So they suggested we start with the shocks. Now I bought <coughs> four shocks and it came with um, some mounting, some mounting kits. So oh, yeah. You know, so we're going to open up all this gear. Um, I have no idea. I hope there's some sort of instructions. I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't know where I'm going to mount the reservoirs for for the car, but what I like to be at the reservoirs is because we have a really constant load on the rear. Um, you can dial it up and dial it down if you need to. Now, apparently, these shocks coming out of factory are set to a general, like a general setting across the board. So if we have to go back up to Cape York or do the gib, I can tighten, stiffen them up or soften them um, as we go along. So I think that's a, yeah, I think that's going to be pretty cool. I've been told that we are going to absolutely love them. It's going to change our ride. So enough trouble. Let's get straight into it. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> now at least it came with um, instruction manuals with the fitting kit. So fitting instructions to our Land Cruiser Series rear. There you go. I was just looking for that. So that's the rear fitting kit, and um, there's 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 bulk going on here. So we're going to go through this before we even get started. And um, left hand and right hand. So there you go. So it shows exactly how to put it all together, which is pretty cool. We can get one out. We're going to get underneath. We're going to have a look. Trade assistant. Don't mind it. I tell you what, it has not been an easy job when you don't know what you're doing. But I'm learning. So the first shock's taken us like two, maybe three hours to get in. But I've learned because I got it in and I had to, oh, it was the wrong way around and I had to turn it back around. And um, anyway, this next, uh, this is the left hand side shock. Now it's got to go in pretty much uh, that way down and we've learned to compress the shock we ratchet strap around and pull it up and then i can get it on that's what took quite a while and just the brackets and stuff but we've got one in so here we go
hit another snag. So this tray's coming off. And that way, when the tray came off, I was going to take those water tanks out and put in. Um, you guys have must probably see me use it. I use it to fill up the, the, the like the cruiser and transfer water to the caravan and pump it in. And um, yeah, they got to come out because the brackets for the, that hold the um, remote reservoir actually needs to go up. So I've got to yeah, I've got to get these tanks out. They was they were going to come out anyway, so we have got to take all this all this out. And um, so that's slowed me down a little bit. I'm just going to rip them out and then hopefully get those brackets on so we can move on to the front tires. Uh, or the front, the front um, shocks, I should say. She's Louise. And we got them out with a struggle. You did struggle, but you got it. I'm Patience. just struggling, struggling, struggling. But now you can see I've got to get that up and get the the remote resist mounted so we can move on to the front ones I reckon okay patience is taking its toll so what we've done is because we've never done this before this is um, definitely something I wouldn't do again but Anyway, we've done the front right shock. Here we go. It's all in. It's taking me two and a half hours. I don't know if there's a trick, but you've got to loosen these um, top spring. There's three bolts. And you've got to put a plate on. And you've got to try and get your tools back in to tighten it. That middle one actually needs um, talking. I have absolutely no idea how they do that. And then you've got to put the reservoir on. But there's two nuts at the back of this plate. You can't get into it. So I actually ended up taking the plate back off, screwing this tight down onto the BP, um, the reservoir shock, and putting it back in and tightening these bolts up again. Now we're gonna climb into the other side and hopefully from learning from this side, we can complete the other side. So, that shock is ratchet strapped in. A few arguments later. Gotta be careful. Put that that way. New bush in. And Sue has got the nut and washer in her pocket, I think. And then we're gonna put the new bush on there. Tighten that all up. And then we got the, the mighty old bracket to go on here. That's not in quite properly, that's maybe one, two. Anyway, get that bracket in and then I'll just go around the car and make sure I've tightened everything. All right guys, we've had these shocks now. You would have seen we've completed putting the shocks in. We've done a little bit of um, kilometers with these shocks on and I've got to say, I do honestly feel a difference. We don't have the boat on the roof yet of the canopy. So I don't know how that's all going to unfold, but I have towed the van with it i do feel the weight difference in the canopy and i do find the shocks are a little bit more smoother and we see and we haven't really tackled any dirt roads so i'm pretty happy with them so far but they're a bit dirty now but i have tried to wash it there you go so they're all in nice and snug i wouldn't most probably <coughs> tackle this by myself again sue's like we'll pay next time but that's the other side of the front. There you go. All in. But that's a wrap for these um, mods on the car. Come and join us next week. We've got one more episode. We're not going to drag this out. The rest of the car, what we've done to try and make it more comfortable for ourselves. And the upgrades that we've done on the front end of the car, the top of the car, under the car in the engine bay blah 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 if you don't want to miss that hit the like and subscribe button down below and um, you won't miss that and our future upcoming episodes so after this install myself and sue are still married 
but um, there were some close calls with those shocks. But anyway, we had some fun. From myself soon, Bobby, guys, you have a fantastic week. We'll see you the next in the, in the next episode where we show you the other upgrades, and then hopefully we're back on the road and exploring this beautiful country. Take care. See ya.